Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And moving on to an example, let's try to take that manufacturing flow chart that we went over and put it through a scenario. Now this example is written out in the lecture notes, so you don't have to write all of this out. And basically what we have here is a company that had the following figures in their inventory at the beginning and end of September. So that's this boxed out area over here. So notice we got raw materials, work in process, finished goods for both September 1st and September 30th, the beginning and the end of the month. And then in addition, we're told during September, direct labor was 80,000, the company purchased raw materials for 170,000, and the total overhead cost was 280,000. And we gotta find these three items here. We gotta find the direct materials used, number two, the cost of goods manufactured, and then number three, the cost of goods sold. So notice that these figures here, they're coming right out of that flow chart. So the first line in that flow chart, if you remember, it's basically beginning raw materials, I'll just write raw over here, plus the purchases of the raw materials. And then from that, what we're doing is we're taking raw materials and putting them in production. And we call that direct materials used. So that's actually what we're gonna be solving for in number one, that's the variable. And then we're gonna have some raw materials left over at the end of the period, and that's gonna be the ending raw materials. And in this particular question, the period that we're looking at is the month of September. So sometimes you'll be looking at a full year, sometimes just a single month, maybe a quarter. In this case, it's just a single month. So really what we have to do is just plug in what we're given. So notice that the beginning raw materials, September 1st, 90,000, so that's gonna go here. Then we're told that there were $170,000 worth of purchases of raw materials. So that's gonna be here. So that's gonna be the 170,000. And then the direct materials used, that's what we're solving for. So let's put a variable X there. And then we got the ending raw materials, the end of the period, we're told September 30th is 120,000. So to solve for this x, what we can do, we can bring this negative x over, it's gonna turn into a positive x, bring the 120 over, that's gonna become a negative 120, so we'll have 90,000 plus 170,000, which gives us 260,000. And then when we subtract the 120,000 from the 260, we end up with 140,000. So that ends up being the answer for number one. So the direct materials used in production was $140,000. And then if you remember from the flowchart, this figure flows to the second line. And what was the second line? Well, the second line that we dealt with was the work in process part. So what we had was beginning work in process plus the manufacturing cost, so basically it was the direct materials used, which is what we figured out in number one. Then we had to add some direct labor, some manufacturing overhead onto that. And then from that, what we did was we took some of those goods, those finished goods, and put them in the finished goods inventory. And those goods we called cost of goods manufactured. So that's what we're going to be solving for in number two. And then from here, basically what happened was uh, we were left over with some other inventory that was still in process of being manufactured. Right? So this beginning work in process is like inventory that hasn't been finished yet. And then we're adding more direct materials more direct labor, more manufacturing overhead. And then out of that, what's gonna happen is there's going to be some inventory that becomes finished. That's gonna become available for sale, ready for sale. So that's gonna be the cost of goods manufactured and that's gonna flow into the finished goods inventory portion, which is gonna be the next line. And then we're still left over with some work in process. So just basically filling everything in, the beginning work in process September 1st would was uh, 60,000, I'm gonna just write 60K over here. Direct materials used, that's what we saw for number one, that's 140K. 
Then we're told direct labor during September was 80,000. So this was 80K, then we had manufacturing overhead. The total overhead cost was 280K. And then the cost of goods manufactured, that's what we're solving for. And we're given the uh, ending work in process, which was 200K. So same sort of thing, what you wanna do, take this negative X, bring it over to the right side, it becomes a positive. And then you wanna add these and then subtract 200 when we bring it over. So this would be 200, 280. 280 plus 280 gives us 560. Minus 200 gives us 360,000. So that is the total cost of goods manufactured for September. So that's the answer for number two. Let's maybe, I'll just write it over here, kind of squeeze it in. So we have 260, or no, sorry, 360 rather, thousand. So that's the answer for number two. And then what happens is that cost of goods manufactured flows into the finished goods inventory. And basically the finished goods is what's gonna be ready for sale to the customer. So we're gonna have beginning finished goods plus that cost of goods manufactured. Now, sometimes you'll see these two figures over here they'll be summed up and basically the sum of them is the cost of goods available for sale. Okay, in that period. So basically you had some finished goods already at the beginning of the period. Then you added some more finished goods, which is the cost of goods manufacturer. So basically all of these goods here are available for sale. They're all finished goods. And then, uh, so one more thing about this terminology here, you're actually gonna see this terminology come up when we talk about the statement of cost of goods sold, but thought I would introduce it here as well. So we have this cost of goods available for sale, and then out of that, we're actually going to sell some goods, and that's gonna be the cost of goods sold for September. And so when we subtract that, at the end of the period, we're still going to have some ending finished goods, and that's gonna flow into the next period and become the beginning finished goods. So these ending finished goods on September 30th, which is here, they're gonna be the beginning finished goods for October 1st, for the next month, right? And so from here, uh, we're solving for cost of goods sold here. So we have the beginning finished goods, so the 70,000. We have the cost of goods manufactured, we solve for that in number two, so that's gonna be 360,000. Then we're gonna be subtracting X, that's what we're gonna be solving for. And then we have the ending finished goods, which is uh, 210,000. And so when we solve for X here, we would end up having uh, 430,000 over here, minus 210,000, which would give us 220,000. And so that ends up being the answer for number three, right? So 140,000, 360,000, and then 220,000. Those are the final answers. And they, the way you solve for these comes right out of that flow chart. You just see what variable you're solving for. The questions aren't always gonna be that simple, right? This kind of information given. At the beginning they will be, but a lot of times you're gonna see, we're gonna go over examples as well. You're sometimes gonna have to work backwards and kind of uh, connect certain things. So it does get more complex, but thought this was a good warm up.